This is the traditional paper mill in Fabriano, Italy. They still maintain its traditional papermaking technique because they believe that its traditional technique is what's in demand in the 21st century. Direi che la, la carta inizia come storia dalla Cina, arriva in Corea e Giappone e solo dopo con gli arabi viene esportata in Italia. This is Gutenberg's 42-line Bible that changed the world. This Bible is made from Italian paper. On a paper made from papermaking techniques from China, Gutenberg printed movable type. Is his movable type printing technique his original invention? The name Silk Road is because silk traveled to the west. If printing techniques cross the continent as well, there must be a type road. This is the northern wall town near Jian, China, where we found a traditional paper mill, which is hard to find nowadays even in China. Tree barks are grinded, then dipped in water and scooped up to make paper. The Chinese are the first people to devise this method of making paper. This method has been used for 2,000 years and is still unchanged. The world's first record of paper is written in the book of later Han. In the book of later Han's section on Che Lun, it says in the ninth year of Yuan Xing, in AD 105, after much studying, Che Lun used bark, hemp, rags, and fishnet to make paper and offered it to the emperor. Paper making from China was shared with Korea, which in turn was passed to Japan. China's paper making also traveled west toward Central Asia and passed on to Samarkand in 751. In Samarkand, Uzbekistan, many families make handmade papers to this day. Mulberry tree barks are grinded to make paper. Although the bamboo frame is small, their paper making technique is the same as that of China, Korea, and Japan. How was China's paper making passed on to Samarkand? This is the Talas Valley in Kazakhstan. In 751, there was the world's first conflict between the Arabs and China. Regarding this war, there is only one line in the Chinese side, Sun Ji's army lost. Sun Ji refers to General Go Sun Ji, an ethnic Ogurio. 
Gosunji was the Praetorian general to pacify the West, a Tang Imperial Army general who oversaw the Central Asia region over the present Uzbekistan. But Gosunji's army lost. The record on the Arab side has a more detailed account of the battle. It says 20,000 Chinese prisoners were held captive from the war. Among these captives were papermakers. A paper mill was built in Samarkand for them to make papers. Since then, the Arabs started using paper. The paper-making technique passed on by the Chinese prisoners in Samarkand was shared to Europe and Egypt past Damascus, the gateway to Europe. The first place in Europe to receive paper-making technique was Fabrino, Italy. After it arrived in 1276, the technique quickly spread as other European countries that needed paper recruited the paper-making technicians of Italy. Sheepskin parchment was used in Europe before paper came to be. It was made with thin sheepskin and used in Europe for a long time to hand copy books before paper arrived. The pros of sheepskin parchment are its softness and durability, but the downside was that it was too expensive. 30 sheep were needed to make one Bible out of sheepskin. During the age of sheepskin, books were too expensive for everyone to own. With the introduction of paper, books were distributed inexpensively. Paper became an important foundation for the civilization of Europe. Finalement, sans l'Asie, sans l'Extrême-Orient, il n'y aurait pas de papier. Ou peut-être qu'on l'aurait découvert dans d'autres circonstances, mais c'est le papier qui a permis l'imprimerie. C'est bien, c'est bien clair. Gutenberg printed 42-line Bible on paper made with Chinese papermaking technique. Was Gutenberg the original inventor of the movable type printing technique he used to print the 42-line Bible? The Chinese scholars have recently printed a book arguing that the printing technique of China was spread westward. In their book, The Invention of Movable Types Printing in China and Its Dissemination, these scholars stated that the movable type printing of China influenced Gutenberg of Germany. Shinichan 但是他发明以后呢，呃，和任何的发明创造一样，他要这个扩展流传。The first record of movable type is from Dream Pool Essays, a book written by Shin Ko in 1041. In the book, it records he took sticky clay and cut it into characters. But the attempt turned out to be a failure because the clay types were fragile and couldn't be mounted. Yinchuan is a city in the northern part of China. Yinchuan is the capital of Ningjiahui Autonomous Region. It is also the second place that took up printing in China. About 10 kilometers away from Yinchuan is the Twin Pagodas, a Buddhist historic site. 
In 1991, a large amount of ancient documents were found in the pagodas while the ruins were being reconstructed. These ancient documents are being studied at the Ningjia Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology. This sutra page presented to us by the Ningjia Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology was definitely a type printed material. In woodblock printing, a letter cannot be printed backwards. Western Jia was a state in northwestern China by the Tang U tribes during Song Dynasty. Western Jia was established in 1032 but perished in 1227 by Genghis Khan. At the time, Western Jia was a Buddhist state and came up with its own writing system called the Tang script and translated many Buddhist sutras into its own language and published them. The St. Peter Institute of Oriental Studies in Russia holds about 9,000 prints from Western Jia. Most of them are printed in woodblock printing. This Vimalakirti Nerdesa Sutra is from the St. Petersburg Institute of Oriental Studies of Russia. This sutra printed in wood type has letters of various sizes that are crooked. This is a very primitive printing technique. It is very different from the precise woodblock printing material of Western Jia at the time. This is Guimet Museum in Paris, France. In this museum are wood blocks used by a minority ethnic people who lived in China at the time. These wood types were used by an ethnic minority people of China called Uyghur. They too made their own Uyghur script. The Uyghur wood types were found in Dunhuang. Dunhuang is geographically close to Yin Chuan, the capital of Western Jia. During the time of Western Jia, Duhuang was under Western Jia's rule. The Chinese academic world believes that the Uyghur wood type was influenced by the Western Jia wood types. Dunhuang, located in the middle of an oasis in the desert, is a long-renowned Buddhist sacred site. Buddhist scriptures in various languages were found in the Dunhuang grottoes. A large amount of Uyghur sutras were found here as well. The Uyghurs used wood type printing in order to make sutras more easily. Dunhuang, the place where the Uyghur wood types were found, has been a key point of the Silk Road. The Chinese scholars argue that the Uyghur wood types have crossed the Silk Road and influenced Gutenberg. Mongu 
向西西部传播。After unifying the Mongolian plateau, Genghis Khan pressed further and took over China, Western Jin, and invaded the Mediterranean as well. After pretty much taking over all of Eurasia, Genghis Khan founded the Yuan dynasty with his Mongol Empire and divided his empire into four Khanates. He took over the Steppe Road and the Silk Road which have been the main artery of commerce between the East and the West since before Christ. Through these roads, the East and the West civilizations have been exchanged. Karakoram was the first capital of the Yuan, the center of the Mongol Empire. During the time of the Mongol Empire, many Arabs lived in this place. The stone tombstones that still exist today show records that there were Islamic temples and schools in this place. Even a pharaoh mask brought in by Egyptian merchants was found in Karakoram. In the Mongol Empire, private trade as well as trade on the national scale with the West was carried out. In 1271, Kublai, the sixth emperor of the Mongol Empire, moved the capital from Karakoram to Beijing. After the transfer of the capital to Beijing, the famous Marco Polo left Italy for Beijing. After living in China for 17 years, he went back and wrote the famous book, The Travels of Marco Polo. Marco Polo was the first European to explain to Europe in detail about the culture and the situation in China at the time. But the travels of Marco Polo does not mention China's movable type at all. Il Canante, with its capital in the now Iran city Tabriz, was one of the major divisions within the Mongol Empire that controlled the entire Arab region. Ghazan il Khanate's seventh ruler ordered his prime minister to come up with a book of world history. This is how the Compendium of Chronicles came to be. Compendium of Chronicles is the world's first world history book. China's history takes an important place in this book because China at the time was Yuan the head of the Mongol Empire. This book gives a detailed account of the woodblock printing of China, but nothing about movable type printing. Marco Polo's Dongbang Hyunmun Nok and Rashid Atteni Jipsa's Chinese Hwalja Insetsuri is not mentioned. At the time, China 활자 인쇄술이 활발히 전개되지 않은 탓에 이들이 몰랐던 것이 아닌가 그렇게 생각이 됩니다. 만약 그들이 알고 있었다면 어, 당시 활자 인쇄술은 목판 인쇄보다 책을 만드는 데 있어 훨씬 신기스럽기 때문에 어, 그들이 알고 있었다면 틀림없이 기록했을 거라고 생각이 됩니다. During China's Song Dynasty, Western Jia took over the northwestern area. Duhong, part of Western Jia, was in the process of making China's first woodblock type printing. When Western Jia was perished by Genghis Khan in 1227, their woodblock type printing stopped. In 1313, during the Yuan Dynasty, woodblock printing reappeared in Jingdi Jian of southern China. Wang Zhen, a government official of this area, made a hundred copies of Jing Di Jiang Ji, a collection of the history and culture of Jing Di Jian. But only the record of the book, not the book itself, exists today. Woodblock printing existed in China during Western Jia times, but it stopped when Western Jia perished. During the Yuan Dynasty, only a record of Wang Jian's wood type printing from 1313 exists. Movable type printing reappeared in Europe in 1450 more than a hundred years later. 
If China's movable type printing technique followed the Silk Road to the West, why did it take more than 100 years until Europe started printing? Chungugo 그렇기 때문에 우리는 중국의 인쇄술이 서양에 전래되었다는 것을 인정할 수가 없습니다. 오히려 그 구텐베르그가 인쇄술을 고안해낸 그 당시에 우리 조선은 그 세종조에 우리의 금속활자 인쇄술이 최고의 기술에까지 도달하게 된 아주 활발한 시기였습니다. 따라서 우리의 인쇄술이 서양에 전래되었을 가능성은 충분히 있는 것입니다. This book was written by Thomas Carter, an American professor who devoted his life for research on China's printing. He too speculated on the possibility of China's printing technique being passed on to the West. But he denied the chance of China's printing technique being spread to the West because the hundred years that elapsed after the closing of the trade routes and before the invention in Europe are difficult to bridge over. On the other hand, he showed an even greater interest to early Joseon's metal type because Koreans began printing with metal type just half a century before Gutenberg's invention. Korea was the first country to invent metal type. The first record of Goryeo's metal type is in Yi Gyobo's collected works of Minister Yi of Goryeo. 28 copies of the 50 volume prescribed ritual text were printed in metal type. The prescribed ritual texts were printed in Kanghado in 1234. This book was commissioned by Goryeo's central government. Why was it published in Kanghado? The Mongols, who were conquering Eurasia, made its second invasion to Goryeo in 1232. Goryeo transferred its capital to Kanghado to prepare itself against the Mongol invasion and printed the prescribed ritual texts there. How did Goryeo's metal type change after this? Changwansu's 주자 인쇄는 그후 원에 대한 항정, 그 이제 항전이지. 이 계속되다가 이제 그후는 굴복이 됩니다. 굴복된 이후엔 역시 그 굴욕적인 정치의 지배하에서 있었기 때문에 학문은 물론 교육이 위축이 됩니다. 따라서 주자 인쇄도 when the government's metal type printing stopped, Hungdok Temple of Chengju carried on Goryeo's printing technology. Printed in Hungdok Sa with metal movable type, Jikji is the only book printed with metal type during Goryeo times that still exists today. It is also the oldest metal type printed book in the world. After Goryeo perished and Joseon was founded, metal type printing enjoyed its golden age. In the annals of the Joseon dynasty, it states that a new type boundary was built in the third year of King Taejong. Jujaso was Joseon's national printing house, specializing in metal type printing. The metal type made at the time was called Gemija. It is called Gemija because it was made in the year of Gemi, or the year of the sheep. During King Taejong's time, several books were printed with Gemija. Taejong. 
최종에 이르러서 어, 이제 정권이 안정되고 그 다음에 국가적으로 이런 불교 국가에서 이데올로기적으로 성리학으로 전환되는 과정에서 어, 그런 어떤 교육의 필요성으로 논어나 뭐 소학 등등 그런 교과서의 필요성 또 역사서 또 충효에 관계되는 뭐 그런 책들의 필요성을 느껴서 어, 그런 것이 이제 빨리 국가 주도 형태로 변화하는 과정에서 주자 인쇄술이 더 활기를 띠지 않았을까 그렇게 추정하고 있습니다. As the state started taking control in the early Joseon period, Korea's metal type technology reached its peak during Sejong's era. Gumpinja, made during Sejong's time, was the pinnacle of Korean technology. It was the best in the world. Professor Carter of America strongly pointed out the possibility of early Joseon's metal type spread to the West. In the same case with China, he denied the possibility of its spread westward in the end. According to him, during early 1400, when Joseon's metal type flourished, intercourse between Europe and the Far East were non-existent, therefore making it impossible for Korean printing technology to reach the West. In 1368, Yuan, the headquarter of the Mongol Empire, collapsed and gave way for Ming Dynasty in China. In Central Asia, a new empire called Timur Empire came to be. After being ruled by a different ethnic group for about 150 years, the Han, fearful of being under the rule of other ethnic groups, built the Great Wall of China and had their army stay alert. Kata 그러나 15세기 그 원나라가 멸망한 이후 우리가 이제 아마 그 통소 교류에서 어떤 그 폐쇄기다 아마 이렇게 보는 것은 조금 목표가 있고 역시 그 계속 결혼이 진행됐고 아 유루히 투흥 우드네사와 투치인 볼을 다른 어린이 할자 볼을 빛니 믿게 시기 울분 비버터들 유앙우신 따라 in 1403, when Gemija reopened doors for movable type printing during Taejong's reign, one man traveled from Spain to Samarkand, the capital of the Timur Empire. Clavijo visited the Timur Empire on behalf of the King of Spain, who wanted a favorable relationship with the Timur Empire. The Timur Empire followed the Mongol Empire of Yuan, posed as the biggest threat to the relationship between the East and the West. The Spanish ambassador, Clivijo, stayed in Samarkand for three years, visiting the Timur Emperor several times during his stay and published his travel notes. Titled Narrative of the Embassy of Roy Gonzalez de Clavajo to the Court of Timor and Samarkand, A.D. 1403 to 1406. In this book, Clavajo wrote, in 1404 there came Samarkand, a caravan of 800 camels from China with silk, gems, musk, and rhubarb. Envoys from a tribe living apparently in eastern Siberia bringing falcons, sables, and marten skins to Timor. Russian merchants with lion and furs. Samarkand in the time of Timur was the center of a far-reaching network of routes. Who were the envoys from eastern Siberia who brought falcon sables and marten skins to Timur? <laughs> In 
зүүн сибир гэдэг маань одоогийн зүүн хойдтын нутаг солонгосын хойг зүүн сибир нутаг юм аа за тэр үед төмөрийн эзэн тусад очих элчин гэвэл элчин илгээг улс гэвэл зөвчд хугацааны манж аймгууд байна а тэр бол хүч дараа сул байсан учраас төмрийн улсад элч илгээг хүч хараа сул юм The Easter Siberian mentioned in Klaviyo's records is your gym bordering Josan at the time Тосон чанги Юдинжог Тосонга е ку чөдө гангэл бомёнэн Юдинжоги чхон Тосон чанги тэжөтэбөтө э ку сонжөтэгаги 1098на ипжөл хананде кожунге сэжонгтэ 349хэй чөдө гангэ гэсэмида In the annals of Joseon dynasty there are several records of the Yorchins visiting Korea to offer tributes The names Orenge and the Altari are both Yurjin tribes. It is recorded in the annals of the Joseon dynasty that the Yurjins and Joseon were so close that King Sejong the Great told them, "I love you as though you're my own people." During Sejong's era, the four forts and six posts were established near the Yalu River and the Tumen River, completely subjugating Yurjin. Exchange between the two countries reached its highest peak in this era. It is also the era Korea vigorously printed with metal movable types. The name Mongodo appears in the annals of Sejong. He was a Yurchin chief with an ethnic Mongol background. Yurchin족 Mongol족은 원래 형제처럼 가까운 사이입니다. 그러니까 같은 유목민족으로서 그 명나라나 조선과는 다른 그런 생활을 했기 때문에. 몽고와 여진은 항상 교류 관계를 가졌었고 특히 또 동몽고족인 우량 삼위 울량아는 지역 지역은 만주에 살지만도 몽고족이었기 때문에 삼위 울량아를 통해서 많은 물자라든가 교역이 이루어졌다고 생각됩니다. The Urgens and Joseon trade with each other, and the Urgen envoys pass the Mongolian plateau and to the Samarkand of the Timur Empire. The envoys from Yurchin passed Mongolia through the steppe road. The steppe road has long been taken by the northern nomads to connect to east and the west. The Yurchins, the Mongols and the Timurs are all nomadic people. Since nomadic tribes did not farm, they needed to interact with others in order to survive. Among the Yurjins that came to Joseon, there were even Mongolians. And there were even Yurjins named Timur. When the Yurjins crossed the steppe road to go to Samarkand, Ming sent 800 camels to the Timur Empire. This shows that although militarily tense, there had been private trades. And at this time, Joseon sent many envoys to Ming. Song Jolsa was sent for the emperor's birthday. And Chan Chusa for the crown prince's birthday. Jinhasa was sent for every occasion that called for celebration in the Ming's royal court. Jungjosa was sent for the new year. Seunsa was sent to thank Ming for its favor. Ju Changsa was sent whenever there was an announcement to Ming. The Sari Bumyonun. 이제 조선에서는 자주 사신을 보내어서 선진 문물을 받아 오려고 하는데 중국에서는 도리어 너무 자주 오지 말아라. 예, 3년에 한 번씩 와라. 조선에서는 1년에 또 자주 가려고 하는 그렇게 해서 
에, 자주 중국의 감으로 해서 선진 문물 받아들이고 또 경제 혜택도 얻고 또 새로 성립된 조선 왕조의 그 정통성도 확보하려고 하는데 더큰 의미가 있었던 것 같습니다. While Joseon was meeting the Timur Empire through the Yurchens and Ming, Russian merchants went to the Timur Empire as well. The Russian merchants crossed the Volga River and went to Samarkand by land. The Volga River is the largest river to pass through present-day Russia. If you go up this river, you'll find yourself in Novgorod, Russia. Novgorod is a city located along the upper stream of the Volga River and the Volkhov River that goes out to the Baltic Sea. Novgorod was the center of trade between the east and the west because of its developed maritime trade routes. Many merchants from Asia and Europe came here. Novgorod, это вот этот торг, вот этот торг, ну базар, как хотите там. Это был самый большой в Восточной Европе. Сюда свозили с разных мест товары, и отсюда немецкие купцы. Мы прямо сейчас находимся на месте, где немцы загружали свои ладьи. Вот прямо здесь, вот на этом месте, да. И здесь Новгород находился на перекрестке Восточной и Западной европейской торговли. В начале 15 века мы торговали с Востоком, ну а дальше знаменитый великий шелковый путь. Китайский за шелком, как наши купцы ходили, ну не наши, а вот итальянские, там западноевропейские другие, они по великому пути ходили до Самарканда, а уже арабские купцы ходили до Китая и до Кореи, по видимому. То есть прямой связи не было, но посредническая связь, конечно, была, без сомнения. Почему в Новгороде иранская посуда? Near the riverside in Novgorod, we can still find traces of the massive warehouses of the German merchants during the Middle Ages. This place with a sign that reads Great Moscow Road is where a trade plaza managed by a German used to be. Вот здесь, за этой аркой, в конце 12 века был построен немецкий двор. Вот этот двор существовал 400 лет. Здесь четыре столетия жило обычно 70-80 немецких купцов. Вот. И сюда к ним на этот двор приходили русские купцы и восточные купцы, которые нуждались в товарах, привезенных из Германии. Это купцы из Северной Германии, Любик, Гамбург, Бремен, то есть то, те самые города, которые в дальнейшем стали основой Ганзейского союза. The Hanseatic League was an alliance of trading guilds from over 100 major cities in Europe that lasted approximately 300 years, from 1358 to 1669. Its headquarters was in Lübeck. A branch was set in Novgorod. The German merchants crossed the Baltic Sea, passed through Novgorod, and brought goods from Russia and the east to Lübeck. After the goods arrived in Lübeck, they traveled to various places in Europe through the North Sea and the River Rhine. The Hanseatic merchants, whose trade was centered on the sea and the river, had military power as well. An exhibition room in the Holstentor, Hanseatic Museum, has a collection of furs from Novgorod. The handelsbeziehungen with Novgorod were ganz bedeutend for Lübecker. Denn es gab die Novgorod-Fahrer, also Kaufleute, die ständig mit Novgorod handelten. Und man holte aus Russland Wachs für die Kerzen und Pelze. Und darunter waren Eichhörnchen, Marder, Zobel, Füchs, Fuchsfälle. Es war ein begehrtes Handels. Die Urgens offered Martin Fur to Timur. The Jurgens frequently offered Martins to Goryeo as well. Martins were the Jurgens' specialties. Maybe this Martin is from Jurgen, the northern part of Korea. This museum also houses pearls and other jewels from Frankfurt.
Frankfurt war ebenfalls ein Mitglied der Hanse und ein bedeutender Messeplatz. Alljährlich fanden hier große Messen statt und es kamen Waren aus Osten, Westen, Norden und Süden, aber auch Waren aus dem Orient. The Hanseatic merchants of Lübeck crossed the North Sea between England and Germany and came down the River Rhine to trade with Frankfurt and fellow Hanseatic city. To this day, Frankfurt is one of the largest trade centers in Germany. Frankfurt held fairs starting from the 1200s. During Gutenberg's time, it was the biggest fair in Europe. Gutenberg brought a sample of the Bible he had printed to this fair. One bishop who saw this wrote to the archbishop, I was surprised to see a man in Frankfurt who brought a sample of the Bible he had printed and sent him this interesting news. This man who surprised him was none other than Gutenberg. Gutenberg printed his Bible in Mainz. He made his first attempt at printing in Strasbourg. He brought a sample of his Bible to Frankfurt all three cities are by the River Rhine. Strasbourg still holds the great warehouse from the Middle Ages. Mainz is Gutenberg's hometown as well as where his movable type printing came to be. There is still a huge warehouse by the River Rhine side. Gutenberg was born in the riverside of the Rhine and developed his movable type printing by the riverside. Korea's metal movable type printing technology began during the Goryeo period and reached its peak in the early Joseon period. It could have passed the steppe road and the silk road to get to Central Asia and then go across Russia and to the River Rhine. In other words, there is a good chance that Gutenberg heard about Korea's metal movable type technology. Life magazine selected the 100 most important events and the people of the past 1,000 years. China, Zheng He placed 14th on the list. Zheng He made seven voyages through the sea from 1405 to 1433. For each voyage, he took 20,000 to 27,000 men with him because he wanted to tell the world about the new Ming Dynasty and show off its might. Is there a chance Korea's metal movable type technology was spread to the west through Zheng He? So this kind of thing is unusual. If I mean, it definitely Cheng Ho uh, have I mean has already talked about because it's an important thing. It's an important thing that been happened that from the east, from Korea or from China, things like that. And if Chen Ho knew this thing happened in, from, the, from the Korean uh, people or from the Korean courts. Uh, clearly, there will be some discussion regarding the printing, things like that that's already been done in Korea. And definitely, the new thing will be being talked about by the people, by the society, by the people at large. So uh, there's no doubt that this thing been transpired to the Western. Jing He was a eunuch who assisted the emperor and the royal court. Since the capital of Ming was Nanjing, the envoys from Joseon visited Nanjing. Therefore, there's a good chance that Jing He, who worked in the royal court, could have heard about Korea's metal movable type from the Joseon envoys. The Arab countries were an important destination for Jing He's voyages, connected with Europe through both land and the sea route. The greatest trade center through the Mediterranean Sea at the time was Venice, Italy. 
I mercanti veneziani in particolare tra 1100 e 1500 mantengono loro fondaci, i loro propri stabilimenti in tutte le città della costa del Mediterraneo orientale, eh, sulle coste della Siria e poi a Costantinopoli in particolare. Ci sono palazzi che ricordano l'architettura del Medio Oriente, ci sono cammelli sulle facciate di alcuni palazzi, ci sono mercanti con fogge arabe eh, su, in alcune zone eh, di Venezia. Many merchants from Venice visited the Arabs, and many Arab merchants came to Venice as well. In this Arab street in Venice, there still is a sign that tells people that this was the Arab district, as well as their market. This shows that numerous Arab merchants came to Venice, as well as how close the merchants from Venice and Arabs were. The Gyeongju National Museum houses an Arab clay doll. It is in the image of the Arab merchants who came to Shilla during the Three Kingdom period. There's even an Arab statue in front of King Wonsong's royal tomb. The Arabs continued to visit Korea even during the Goryeo period. The Tashi people from the history of Goryeo refer to the Arabs. They came to Korea in order to trade. They gave gifts to the king whenever they came. The Arabs kept a close relationship with Joseon even during the Joseon period. There's a record that they came to King Sejong's coronation ceremony and recited the Quran to Sejong. If they recited the Quran in front of King Sejong, that means they were very close. Joseon 초기의 기록을 살펴보면은 세종조의 아랍인들이 우리나라를 왕래한 기록이 많습니다. 따라서 그들이 우리의 최고조에 달했던 인쇄 문화를 모를 리가 없었을 것입니다. 따라서 그들이 자기네 나라로 돌아가면서 그러한 기술들을 자연스럽게 전래가 되었을 거고 그것이 아랍을 통해서 서양으로 전래되었을 가능성도 또한 충분합니다. Korea has been meeting the world since long ago. This is the ruins of Afrasia in Samarkand of Uzbekistan, a key point of transportation between the east and the west. The mural painting found here surprised the world as well as Korea. The mural had paintings of the Samarkand king and his subjects, as well as envoys from China, envoys from Mongolia, envoys from the Turks of Central Asia, an elephant that envoys from India took, as well as envoys from far away Goguryeo. The Korean people had been interacting with the world even before the Three Kingdom period. Since thousands of years ago, numerous people have crossed the steppe road, the lone deserts, the steep mountains, and the wild sea to connect the east and the west.
Korea's metal type printing was invented during Goryeo times for the first time in the world. It reached its pinnacle during Sejong the Great's reign in early Joseon. There was definitely a way for the Korean metal type technology to reach Gutenberg. Wir wissen, das Papier ist von Ostasien auf Europa gekommen über die Seidenstraße und über die Handelsbeziehungen. Wir wissen das Ganze auch vom Holzschnitt, dem Hochdruckverfahren. Inwieweit Kenntnisse des Metallschnittes aus Asien nach Straßburg oder Mainz gekommen sind, haben wir in den Akten bisher nicht finden können. There is no documentary evidence. Was Gutenberg's movable type system innovation or an original invention? Gutenberg holds a strong place in world history. But there is hardly any research being done on whether Korea's metal type system influenced Gutenberg or not. Uh, Civilization flows like water. It moves from top to bottom. That's how history of mankind has moved on. There was definitely a way Joseon's metalloid movable type system, which was the best in the world at the time, to travel to Europe. The fact that Gutenberg, a man who had nothing to do with printing, perfected the metal movable type in just 10 short years, gives strength to the type road hypothesis of Korea. Unfortunately, we haven't found any direct written evidence. Now is the time for us to start researching this matter. We need government support and joint research from scholars. We will research with the pride of the country that invented metalloid movable type. Our proud heritage will shine even brighter. Isn't it our job to get to the bottom of whether a type road existed or not. Thank you.